The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each Wednesday by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, are the makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices, that extra mellow-tasting pasteurized processed cheese in perfect slices. I wonder if you've seen them in your grocer's dairy case, those neat, really neat square packages of Kraft Deluxe Slices. They're so neat you'd never guess everyone holds eight big slices of extra delicious processed cheese. Eight perfect slices, no slivers or broken pieces, that are cut, wrapped, and sealed for you by Kraft. So look for them when you shop the five delicious kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, it's a brisk fall morning in Summerfield. The maples are turning red and gold, and there's a fine lift in the air. Makes a man feel like being up and doing. The great Gildersleeve is up. And what's he doing? Well, he's coming out to get the morning paper. Say, what a day. Sunshine, blue sky. Why, George, on a day like this, a man can't go wrong. Good morning, Gildersleeve. Yeah. Oh, Judge Hooker. <laughs> out pretty early, aren't you, Horace? Yes, I'm taking a walk. Getting some ozone in my T-zone. That's <laughs> very good, John. How do you like my autumn necktie, Gilda? You, oh, brother, a purple tie. You, what's that on a judge? A green duck? That's a chartreuse goose. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a combination. An old goat with a chartreuse goose. Gilda. Hi, Judge Hooker. Good morning, Leroy. Look at the new football Unc bought me. Keen, huh? Oh, that's a Cracker Jack. Yeah. Unc got it for me. Yeah, what a fine little boy. We're going to work out some tricky plays and stuff, aren't we, Unc? Sure. My, how nice it is to see you and little Leroy growing closer together. Doing things together. Unc can do anything. Better than anybody. (laughs) Oh, isn't that just like a boy, Judge? He's setting a high standard for you to live up to, Gilde. You should be very proud. Why, am? Yes, sir. Well, I have to be going. Good day, Gilde. You lie, Judge. Fine old friend. So long, Judge. Okay, come on, Unc. Let's run a couple of plays. You well, I'm not exactly dressed for football, my boy. Oh, come on, Unc. I'll bet you were a swell football player when you were in school. Well, I was pretty tricky. Nimble, too. I wish I could have seen you. Yeah, I used to run interference. Clearing a path for the man with the ball. A path? You could clear a road. <laughs> you bet. You know this player, Choo Choo Justice? Yeah? Well, they used to call me Honk Honk Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gee, and you're my uncle. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago, Leroy. You better take the ball and find some of your little friends. Uh, throw me just one pass, Unc. Just one. Well, all right. You run across the lawn and I'll throw it to you. Uh, hello, Gildersleeve. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Playing football, are you? No, no. Just tossing the ball around. Mr. Boyd, Uncle Mort used to be a famous football player. Really? Now, wait. Sure. He was the captain of the team. Weren't you, Uncle? Leroy, I didn't say that. Oh, this is very interesting. I played football, you know. Oh? Harvard. At what college did you play, Gildersleeve? Uh, College? Gildersleeve, you better get out of this. Uh, What was your position on the team, Gildersleeve? Your position? Well... I could play any position, couldn't you, Unc? Now, Leroy... I didn't know you were active in sports, Gildersleeve. Oh, I'm not. He is, too. He was the trickiest player on the team. Show him, Honk Honk. (laughs) Show him how he used to tear up the opposition. Yeah, let's try it, Gildersleeve, just for fun. Now, wait. I'll be the opposing team, and you carry the ball. I'll try to stop you. She didn't got to be keen... He'll never lay a hand on you, Unc. Oh, my goodness. Signal. 24. 77. 46. Hey! Turn up! Yeah. Look out, bullet. End of the line, Gildersleeve. Down you go. Grump! Grump! 
I'd say you lost about five yards on that play, Gildersleeve. I lost more than that. Gee, Uncle, what happened? How should I know? That Bullard. What a sneaky thing to do. Flatten me right in front of Leroy. And after I'd told the boy I was such a hot football player, I only told him that to make him happy. Honk, honk, Gildersleeve. You ought to have your head examined. Good heavens, Uncle Mort, what happened? Why, look at your suit. Was that, Marjorie? Oh, yes. Grass stains. Well, I was playing with Leroy. Must have slipped. <laughs> Excuse me, what was going on out there in the front yard? First I seen you running, then you disappeared. Did you fall in a hole? <laughs> it was nothing, but we were just playing a little game. I never seen nothing like that. What you call that game? Drop the water commissioner. What's that? <laughs> nothing, Bertie. Yes. First he was there, and then he wasn't. He fell in a hole. <laughs> hey, look at Leroy. Still out there in front talking to Bullard. What are you looking at, Anki? You had Bullard. Standing in our grass. How can it grow with his big feet on it? Oh, Uncle Mort. What happened between you and Mr. Bullard? Yeah, nothing new. Just that I get pretty tired of him coming over here, showing off in front of Leroy. I should tell him to get off the property. Oh, Unc. Hey, Unc. Yeah, I'm in the living room, Leroy. How do you feel, Unc? Anything busted? No, nothing is busted. Nothing that shows at any rate. Gee, Unc, what happened? Leroy, stop asking me what happened. Well, what did? Nothing. Simply because I slipped on the wet grass and that Bullard jumped on me. I've been talking to him, Unc. Gee, he's pretty good at a lot of stuff. Leroy, simply because the grass was wet. Okay, so he's better than you at football. There's other things you can do better than he can. Isn't there? <laughs> Certainly there are. Plenty of things. Think you can beat him playing golf? He says he only shoots 70. Well, I'd have to spend some money to beat him at that. I only have one club. <laughs> Gee, maybe tennis, Unc. He says he only plays that three times a week. What happened to my tennis racket? Oh, yes. Bertie used it the night the bat got in the house. <laughs> well, I know you're better than Mr. Bullard at something. There has to be something. Hiking, maybe? Hiking? Say, that's a thought. Bullard doesn't even walk down to the drugstore. Hiking is a sport, isn't it? Certainly it is. Go challenge your monk. Leroy, you can't challenge a man to a hike. Let's not be silly about this thing. Well, we got to win at something. You poor little fellow. All right, my boy. As soon as I change my clothes, I'll stop over and see Mr. Bullard. Hello, boy, Unc. Sneaky trick, asking Bullard to go for a hike. After all, I walk to the office almost every morning. Yeah, I don't think Bullard walks from the living room to the dining room. I'll bet he has bus service. Well, it serves him right. He knocked my legs out from under me. I'll walk his legs off of him. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hello, Bullard. I just stopped by to say, no hard feelings. Well, that's nice of you. But if there are no hard feelings, why are you smiling? Well, I'm smiling because it's a nice day. Oh. In fact, I was about to suggest that you and I take a little hike together tomorrow morning. Hike? Yeah. That means to go someplace, walking. You want me to go for a hike? Yeah, it might be a lot of sport. Good exercise. Very well. We'll go tomorrow morning. Oh, fine. Bright and early? If you like. Shall we go out to Old Stone Face? Stone Face? Well, I've never been there, but it sounds interesting. It certainly does, Stoneface. Here, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> See you in the morning. At the crack of dawn. Fine. Thank you for asking me. Oh, yeah, that's all right. See you in the morning. Goodbye. See you in the morning. <laughs> you right, Georgie fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> it's a dirty trick, but he's got it coming to him. Besides, when he pulls up beside the road in the morning, a car can come out and get him. Say, I'm going down to the barbershop. I don't need a shave, but Floyd will get a kick out of hearing about this. Yeah, I can hear him laughing now. (laughs) 
Yeah. I knew you'd get a laugh out of it, Floyd. Hey, you inviting Bullet to go hiking. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I ever heard, too. And you're going out to Old Stone Face, huh? Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> Someplace Bullard's heard about. He probably has no idea what it is or how to get there. Oh, he knows what it is. It's a hunk of rock. Goes way up in the air. In fact, I told him about it. You told him? <laughs> Kamish, I got news for you. Oh? Does high places bother you? High places? Yeah. Well, I don't like it when you lift the barber chair up. Have you ever wanted to crawl out on the ledge of a five-story building? Floyd, what are you getting at? Get a grip on yourself, Kamish. Bullard spent two years in Switzerland. He's a mountain climber. <laughs> Mountain climber? Sure, he goes out looking for cliffs. He crawls up them, holding on by his toenails. What? It's his hobby, Kamish. If you and him are going hiking, you ain't just going to Old Stone Face. You're going up it. Oh, my goodness. Gildersleeve, you've done it now. This time you've gone too far. The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. Say, friends, have you tasted the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices? Every package of Kraft Deluxe Slices holds eight of the most perfect slices of the mellowest, most delicious pasteurized processed cheese you've ever eaten. You see, Kraft Deluxe Slices are different. They're not cut from a loaf. Instead, an amazing new Kraft invention forms these perfect slices in a way that captures all the fine, deep-down, mellow flavor in every slice. Then, right away, the slices are wrapped, ate to a package, and sealed by Kraft. That way, these fine slices stay perfect and protected all the way to your kitchen. And you won't find a sliver or a broken piece in the package. That way, you can be sure all eight big slices are perfectly easy to separate, too. Why, you can peel these slices apart easier than you'd peel a banana. So get Kraft Deluxe Slices tomorrow. Get several packages so you'll have some on hand always for wonderfully quick and easy snacks and sandwiches. Remember to look for them in your grocer's dairy case when you shop. Kraft Deluxe Slices. This morning, the great Gildersleeve set out to prove to his little nephew Leroy that he was a better man than Rumson Bullard. And it's turning out to be quite a job. That Bullard, football player, tennis expert, golf champion. I was sure I could walk farther than he could. Now he's a mountain climber. Gildersleeve, you just keep your big mouth shut. Well, after this, I will. Yeah, you say that, but you won't. Anyway, it's too late now. You've done it. Insisting that Bullard go hiking with you. Oh, brother. I can see myself going up old stone face like a bug on a wall. <laughs> I don't dare tell the little family. Say. Maybe I should. They'll put their foot down. They won't let me take a risk like that. Sure. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> oh, Gildersleeve, you're shrewd. <laughs> Hello. Anybody home? Hello, Unky. Hi, Unk. George Hooker and I are going out in the morning looking for nuts. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going hiking with Mr. Bullard in the morning. Judge Hooker's a keen old guy. Leroy, I said I was going hiking with Mr. Bullard in the morning. Aren't you even interested? Oh, sure, but I can't go with you, Unk. I promised Judge Hooker. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know you and Mr. Bullard will have a good time, Unky. He is, but Marjorie, wait. It's going to be pretty whiskey. We're going up a cliff. Straight up. Bullard is a mountain climber from Switzerland. Hey, that's keen, Unk. Keen? Yeah. Maybe he'll teach you to yodel. Over. <laughs> Children, I'm telling you about it because I want you to know. This is going to be dangerous. When you go up a mountain, you don't always come down. Ah, you'll come down. <laughs> yes, but... Oh, I'm not worried about Mr. Bullard, Unky. Neither am I. But what about me? What's the matter? Don't you want to go, Unk? Well, certainly I want to go, but... Uh, Unky, do you want us to tell you not to go? No, you, of course not. It's just that... Well, then, if you want to go, you go. Oh, what a stubborn family. Hello, Phoebe. Yeah, hello, Mr. 
Dr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? You just give me a Colt BB. Double strength. Yeah, very well. Everybody all right at home, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, fine. Marjorie and Bronco are happy about the baby coming, I presume? Yeah, happy. The Coke will be ten cents. Ten cents? And when I finish the conversation, it's five cents extra. <laughs> You're all right, Pete. Well, it isn't really five cents extra. I say that sometimes. It amuses people. Oh, sure. Mr. Bullard was in a while ago. Says he and another fellow are going to out and climb old Stoneface tomorrow. Who? Who? What else did he say, Peavy? Uh, he was telling me all about mountain climbing. <laughs> the things those fellows do. What do they do, Peavy? Well, it seems they carry a kind of a pickaxe. Yes? And when they're 500 feet in the air, they'll reach up and stick the point of that pick in an overhanging rock. Yeah? And then what? Then they climb up the handle. <laughs> Oh, he says there's no danger unless the handle comes loose. Gee. Of course, as Mr. Bullard says, there's one nice thing about going mountain climbing. Oh? If you make one slip, you don't have to worry about walking home. Well, that doesn't. I'm not going. Are that? Nothing, Pete. I thought you said you weren't going. Well, I'm not. Well, what are you getting off the stool for? I'm going. I thought you said you weren't. Well, I'm not. Peavy, you're all mixed up. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Climbing up pick handles 500 feet in the air. That's going too far. I'm simply going to tell Bullard it's all off. He can swing by pick handles if he wants to. He isn't going to liquidate this water commissioner. Ooh, there's Bullard and Leroy in front of the house. Well, I'll just tell him I can't make it, that's all. Hi, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. Good evening, Gildersleeve. Hello, Bullard. Mr. Bullard's been telling me about mountain climbing. Gee, you sure got nerve, Unc. You well, the fact of the matter is... I uh, came over to see if you had a stout rope, Gildersleeve. Is that rope? Yes. When we go up old stone face, we'll tie one end around your waist and the other around mine, just in case one of us should slip. Yes. You well, Bullard. Uh, we'll need it to in ascending the nose of old stone face. It's the face of an Indian, I understand, has a large nose. Oh? Yeah. We'll throw the rope from below, anchor it to the tip of the nose, and then swing out from the upper lip. Boy! Just like those guys that hang from an aeroplane. You loafer. You bullard. I want to... I want to... Hey, it's starting to rain. Rain? Oh, no, we can't go in the rain. We can't? I mean, we can't? Oh, what a shame. What rotten luck. Yes, isn't it? And I was looking forward to going. Wouldn't have missed this climbing trip for anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Gildersleeve. Well, that's life, bullard. We have to take the bitter with the sweet. Too bad. Hey, what's this, Bertie? And we thought it was rain. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve, we can go after all. Aren't you delighted? <laughs> I'm delirious. Morning for climbing, Gildersleeve. Yeah, fine. Uh, Bullard, we aren't going up that cliff, are we? Well, of course. That's the first step in our climb. This is Old Stone Face, and that's the lower lip. But what are we going to hold on to on the face? No wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the exciting part of it. We'll make our own toe hold. Up we go, Gildersleeve. Bullard. Watch it. Stop pushing. Yes. Oh, this is going to be interesting. There's nothing with which to brace ourselves. Yeah, I can brace myself on my own goosebumps. <laughs> Steady, Gildersleeve. 
Don't look down. Why look down? There's nothing there. Well, we've reached the Indian's upper lip. Mm, a lot of brush in here. Yeah, mustache. <laughs> Quite a climb, eh, Gildersleeve? Yes, it certainly has been. Well, let's go home. Home? This is only the beginning. Now I'll throw the rope up to the end of the nose. You've got bullet. There we are. Now, up we go, Gildersleeve. You what if the rope comes loose at the top? Well, let's not dwell on that. Let's think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Hundreds of feet in the air, climbing over a stone Indian's nose. It'd be just my luck if he sneezed. Hold on to the rope, Gildersleeve. This is where we start up the forehead. You bullet. This is awful high. Yes, yes, it is. Lifts your spirits, doesn't it? Makes you wish you were a bird. Makes me wish I was a gopher. <laughs> I'd dig a hole clear back to Summerfield. Courage, Gildersleeve. This is liable to be just a little risky. <laughs> just a little, he says. Now we'll have to go up over this eyebrow here. An intelligent water commissioner. Hanging onto an eyebrow. <laughs> Dangling in space. Ooh. Careful, Gildersleeve. One slip here and neither of us will have to walk home. We're almost to the top. The things I do for Leroy. If I ever get out of this, I'll never set foot out of the house again. I'll spend the rest of my life in bed. A low bed. Gildersleeve, what are you muttering about? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, bullet, you were just about to the top. Let's sit a minute on this ledge. Yeah, sure. Here's a nice little circular pile of twigs. Nice cushion. Gildersleeve, there's a large bird overhead. He's glaring at you. Hey, big bird. Tough looking, too. He's diving down, Gildersleeve. Look out! No! Get away! Shoot! Shoot! Get out! Cut that out! Gildersleeve, get up! Get up! What's the matter? You're sitting on his nest. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, there goes the rope. What? Hey, Bullet, grab the rope. The end the pick. Oh, brother. Everything gone. Nice work, Gildersleeve. Nice work. Well, thanks. Huh? The rope is gone. The pick is gone. Gildersleeve, barring the possibility that you are carrying a helicopter in your pocket, we are here to stay. But, Bullard, it's only a few feet to the top. Yes, that's true. We could make it easily if we were meadowlarks. Well, somebody will see us. We'll call for help. Yes, yes. The butterflies will hear us. You mean we could sit here from now on? We could. As I see it, this is probably one of the most inaccessible spots in the entire county. And all because you had to drop the rope. Gildersleeve, you are an nincompoop. No, wait. At a time like this, let's not argue. No. No, let's not. I forgive you, Gildersleeve. I forgive you everything you have ever done to me. Now, don't lose your head, Bart. Be calm. I'm calm. You, me too. Old friend. Old pal. You're brave. You too? Friends to the end, Gildersleeve. You bet. Hey, what was that? You sounded like Leroy. Hey, it is Leroy. Leroy, where are you? We're up here, down there. It's Judge Hooker. We're right above you. Judge, you're a lifesaver. How would you ever get way up here? Well, there's a road up here, Gildy. <laughs> and a nice drinking fountain. Leroy and I stopped to see if you'd make it. Oh. For heaven's sakes, we could have driven to the top of this darn thing. What are you doing down there, Gilda? 
We're playing canasta. <laughs> hand something down so we can climb up. Throw down a rope, Judge. We haven't got a rope. You well, hand something down. Here you are, gentlemen. Take hold of this stick. Oh, Jed, you beautiful stick, you. Yeah, yeah I've got it. Hold on, Judge. You will leave, Tom Grant. We'll quit your shoving. No, no, no. You're shoving. Hold on down there. Well, hold it, Judge. I'm coming up. Come on, Bullard. Hold on to my coat tail. Gee, Hunk, you made it. You bet. I got to the top first, too. I'm proud of you, Hunk. You, thank you, my boy. I think you accomplished a remarkable feat, Gilda. And the grandest thing of all is that you and Mr. Bullard, in this heroic struggle on the treacherous slope, have at last found each other as true friends. Gildersleeve. Yes? You stepped on my head. I did? Well, it's been a good day after all. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Mothers, you'll give your family a real treat if you serve Kraft Deluxe Slices, those big, perfect slices of fine, pasteurized, processed cheese that are cut, wrapped, and sealed by Kraft. You know, Kraft Deluxe Slices come in five favorite kinds. Everyone at your house can enjoy his favorite, whether it's delicious Kraft American, Kraft American with scarlet pimentos added, nut sweet Kraft Swiss, Kraft Brick with that deep down rich taste, or sharp, tantalizing Old English brand. So get several kinds for quick, easy-to-fix snacks and sandwiches ready whenever you want them. Tomorrow, when you shop, look in your grocer's dairy case for the five delicious kinds of convenient Kraft Deluxe Slices. Kidding. Did you and Mr. Bullard really climb all the way up old stone face? You, we certainly did. Clear from the bottom. I can't believe it. Miss Gilsley, have you seen the morning paper? No, I haven't, Bertie. Look here. There was a photographer out there yesterday, and he got a picture of you and Mr. Bullard going up that cliff. You did? Well, let's see that. Well, there's old stone face, but I don't see you and Mr. Bullard. You were there. See those two dots on the end of the Indian's nose? I'm the one on the left. <laughs> oh, brother. You did that just for me? Yeah, just for you, my boy. Gee. Hey, Aunt Mr. Bullard's out in front. Shall we get the football and run a couple of plays? Uh, no, thanks. I'm very busy. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gorton, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Here's a secret for making dull meals interesting. Add craft prepared mustard to any meat dish, hot or cold, and see the difference. Hidden flavors pop right out because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard, you know. Craft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember, with any meat dish, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen to The Falcon next Sunday afternoon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and be sure to hear The Falcon solve The Case of the Widow's Gorilla. You bet your life it's Groucho 